and you're watching the How to Entrepreneur YouTube channel where we talk about how to start and grow businesses from idea to full-time income and from full-time income to enterprise. Today, I want to talk to you about a special topic. Judge Judy is ending and I wanted to share with you some business lessons that you and I can apply from her 25-year career. So over the last 25 years that Judge Judy's been filming, I've been very inspired by some of the things that she's done, some of the work ethic, some of the bluntness, some of the um, staying true to yourself, and so many other things. And I want to share with you some business lessons that you and I can both take away. So if that sounds interesting to you, let's get started. So on the Ellen DeGeneres show, Judge Judy announced that she'd be ending a 25-year television career. And I am shocked. I don't know if you are, but I'm shocked. I remember as a young girl watching Judge Judy and now she, she's she been um, recording and filming her show and distributing her show since I was young. So I'm really shocked to see that she is ending the show, but I know she did a long, a long time and she did several years of consistent service. So I really want to talk about how she was able to do what she did and her advice for others who would like to do, um, who, who would like to be influential and to have a longstanding career and achieve successes like she has. So, um, first who is judge Judy? So judge Judy is an American reality court show host. Um, she retired as a Manhattan family court judge and after more than 5,200 episodes and 25 seasons aired, um, there's lots to learn from Judge Judy. So in this video, we will be talking about some learning lessons that we can gain from her 25 years and 5,200 episodes of the Judge Judy show. According to Wikipedia, in 2005, Shineland's salary was $15 million per year. Her net worth at the beginning of 2007 was $95 million and she ranked number 13 on the Forbes top 20 richest women in entertainment. In July 2010, when Shineland's contract was renewed, her salary increased to $45 million per year. It was later reported in October 2013 that Shineland is the highest paid TV star earning $47 million per year for Judge Judy, which translates into just over $900,000 per workday, considering that she works 52 days per year. So according to Forbes, Shyla earned $147 million pre-tax in 2017. Now, who doesn't want to accomplish that? And that's exactly why we'll be talking about some lessons that you can learn from Judge Judy and her 25 years of work experience. So number one is being blunt has its place. So there are so many Judge Judy quotes and they call them Judyisms that she said. And one thing she was really known for is for being very stern and also for, um, for being very direct and blunt. And so, so I want to tell you some of the quotes that she had and she said, don't pee on my leg and tell me it's raining. Don't fool me. In other words, um, beauty fades dumb is forever. She said, I eat morons like you for breakfast. You're going to be crying before this is over. And she says, if it doesn't make sense, it's not true. Or another quote that I really like by Judge Judy is, I love the truth. If you don't tell me the truth, you're going to be eating your shoes. So she did not hold back. She wasn't the type of person that wouldn't address the elephant in the room. Um, she, she didn't skate around uncomfortable situations. Obviously being a family law court, there were a lot of situations that we would, most people would consider uncomfortable marriages that aren't working out relationships that fall apart. Um, somebody is not paying what they should, um, all kinds of situations. And those were the type of things that judge Judy presided over. 
So she was not afraid to address things head on, to address the elephant in the room, to say when someone is wrong or to say when someone is right. And so being blunt definitely has its place because at times you really have to be able to address those uncomfortable situations. So number two, um, develop your area of mastery. Judge Judy said herself, make yourself indispensable and you can command what you're worth. So she's noted for keeping an envelope with the earnings that she wanted in, uh, in the envelope. And when her contract would end, instead of negotiating her salary, she would give the envelope. She didn't negotiate. She simply passed on the amount and she considered herself indispensable because she had established a huge social following, a huge network of people who really loved watching the Judge Judy show and she knew she couldn't be easily replaced. So she could command a certain amount every time. So when you develop your area of mastery, when you start, um, when you like, put yourself out there and build a social following and a really, really strong reputation. It's reputation first and then you you become indispensable. So she says, develop your area of mastery. And when you have a significant competitive edge and those who do business with you know they can't get a better value anywhere else, it gives you the upper hand with getting your price and being and it being ex accepted. So number three is work hard. So many people today are looking for a shortcut. They're looking for an easy way out. They're looking for a way to retire and kind of just kick their feet up and never really have to have any more responsibility in life. And unfortunately, that way doesn't really earn you much. <laughs> um, so if you really want to, uh, if you really want to be able to play hard, you have to work hard. And then you, you, like Dave Ramsey says, you live like no one else so that you can live like no one else. So there's some upfront sacrifice and grunt work that has to take place so that you can play hard. And really, if you do work that you're passionate about, then it's not as much of a necessity for you to get out of it. So find, like like we talked about, develop your area of mastery and work hard while you're there. So um, Judge Judy clearly has a strong work ethic. She was retired from the Manhattan court system when she when the Judge Judy show started. So she was she had already had a career and then she started a second career. So the Judge Judy show is recorded in a simulated courtroom in Hollywood and she presides over 650 claims per year and 15,600 claims by the end of the 2019 season. So she hasn't really taken shortcuts in this regard. Um, she's been consistent. We can, we've been able to expect consistent shows pub, being published and live every, every time that, um, the Judge Judy show is supposed to be live. Um, she's recorded those shows. She's had her staff and her producers and all of the planning that goes into making sure that she has people fly out to Hollywood and, um, all of the background work had to be done so that she can run that show for the last 25 years. And if you think about it, um, that is commitment, dedication, and persistence. So in addition to providing over, presiding over court cases, she also records the show. And like I said, she has a bailiff, producer, and they batch record the episodes, producing 10 to 12 episodes every day. They record the show. They record for three days every other week, and the Judge Judy show has been consistently recorded year-round for 25 years with the exception of two breaks, one in August and one in December for the holidays. So they do a summer vacation in August and then a winter vacation in the holiday season. So that is persistence. If you want to know how she was able to be so successful, it's because the viewers of Judge Judy were able to expect a show for the last 25 years and beyond. And the consistency, she, she built 
um, a following for that show. Number four, jump at opportunities. One thing that many people don't know about Judge Judy is that um, she didn't, she wasn't pitched the opportunity. Some people would expect the opportunity to come to them and maybe you, you expect one day you'll open your mailbox and Oprah will say, oh, you know what? I want you to come on my show. But it doesn't always work like that. For Judge Judy, she actually pitched them that she would take over a show that was ending. And she actually was turned down. They did not accept her offer, but she continued to get um, she continued to get more and more media attention, more and more of a social following. She was doing her own thing and they ended up coming back to her and presenting that opportunity to her. So definitely, um, work hard, jump on opportunities. If the opportunity doesn't work out for you, keep doing your thing. And eventually, you know, things will add up, but definitely, um, continue building your social network because having a strong reputation comes before having a solid um, income. So number five, be true to yourself. Judge Judy has received a considerable amount of criticism over the years. She's been called abrasive and mean and rude and many other things. And um, she even the the original um the original judge that presided over the people's court as it was called spoke very critically of her but she remained true to herself since judge judy's been live on the television um there's other judges that have come about like judge joe brown and judge mathis and all of these other people but judge judy has maintained her her way of doing things um she has maintained she has stayed true to herself and i think that she's a great example because a lot of times when competition comes up or when other people enter into your niche or your market you might get discouraged and feel like i need to maybe pivot a little bit I need to change what I'm doing. I need to change who I am and all of those things. But she really shows us that you just need to be confident and be true to yourself. Even when people might criticize and say all kinds of things like they said about her, be true to yourself. Um, so number six, it doesn't have to be expensive to be profitable. The Judge Judy show is said to cost less than half of what a normal television sitcom costs to produce. So she does many things within the show as impromptu without a script. She gets a small description of the case before presiding and a lot of what we see is impromptu. Is her actually really presiding over the case. So there's not a lot of editing and different things required to um, to, uh, there's not a lot of changing of sets, there's not a lot of rehearsals and all of that in order to record the Judge Judy show, which lowers the cost of production by a lot. Uh, for many people, they think that the higher cost option is going to be the most prof profitable option. And that um, goes when you are purchasing tools and equipment, that might be when you are signing up for a course, um, that might be when you are actually producing whatever your product or service is. A lot of people think that if it's the expensive route, then it'll be the more profitable route. And that's not necessarily the case. And Judge Judy shows us that um, because lots of shows that have come and gone over the last 25 years since she's been filming have costed more than the Judge Judy show, but the Judge Judy show has been known as being extremely profitable. So number seven, set boundaries, know when to say no and when to say yes. So as Judge uh, Judy Shilin sees case after case um, of people who have compromised boundaries, um, boyfriends and girlfriends who loan each other money and then when the relationship is over, then they want the money back. Um, she's seen all kinds of cases, but if you set appropriate boundaries up front, 
then it can eliminate a lot of conflict afterwards. So definitely set appropriate boundaries in your relationships. Know when to say yes and when to say no. And that applies to raising your kids, dealing with your spouse, dealing with a boyfriend or girlfriend, having friends. Know what are appropriate boundaries that you would be comfortable with, whether the relationship goes well or not and make sure to reinforce the boundaries that you have. So this is something I'm singing to myself. (laughs) So number eight, it's never too late to become a success. And um, being a judge is typically known as as a salary job. It's something that um, most people go to school for long periods of time in order to be able to be a presiding judge. And a lot of times, when you become a presiding judge, it can be like a a cap or a glass ceiling to the income potential that you can have. But Judge Judy was able to take a a job that usually has an income cap and make it so much more than a traditional job. And this is something that you can apply to as well, um, to your life as well. Because Um, we all, a lot of people look at jobs as if they're bad because they want to start a business or because they, um, want to have income or location freedom. They look at jobs as being the chain that's holding them down, but you can actually negotiate the, the, um, the opportunities that you have. You can keep looking, you can add other revenue streams. What, um, she demonstrates that it's okay to have a job and also have other revenue streams and she also demonstrates that you can have more than one career successfully because she like i said retired from the manhattan family court and then went on to have a successful television career so those are some really awesome things about her entrepreneurship may present good opportunities but it doesn't have to be a standalone path and we see that with kobe bryant um doing his MBA career. And we see that with Judge Judy doing um, her being a judge and then going on to become an entrepreneur as well. So the right job can be a great launching pad. And what Judge Judy says is if you didn't make it in your 20s, you can make it in your 30s. If you didn't make it in your 30s, you can make it in your 40s. And if you didn't make it in your 40s, you can make it in your 50s. So it's never too late to pursue that dream that you have. So in conclusion, um, Judge Judy's 25 year television career is no small feat. And we can see that work, working hard pays off and, um, laziness does not. (laughs) Um, she was consistent, making sure to show up, to preside over cases, to, um, to help other people. She did, she also does a lot of re, uh, outreach. So she does a variety of things, um, to help out and to help families. And she's written books. She's been an author. So there's lots of things that she did. And I, what, what she, um, ultimately, the method that she used to stack several income streams, I like to call revenue stacking. And if you haven't yet, stop by howtoentrepreneur.com and check out the Enterprise Builder membership is free. And inside of there, I have some, like one exclusive um, class called the the, um, Amplifying Business Growth with Revenue Stacking. So if you'd like to learn more about Amplifying Business Growth, with revenue stacking, or if you'd like to learn how to start or grow a business, definitely stop by howtoentrepreneur.com and check out all the resources that are available there. The goal and the mission there is to help you to start a business and to grow it from from idea to full-time income and from full-time income to enterprise. So hopefully um, you enjoyed this studying about Judge Judy and her awesome 25-year career Um, I think she did a great job and she is a great example. So if you are looking to start a business, you definitely want to watch P. 
people like her who have been very successful, who have developed their high paying skill and who have really used it to change our society and the way we view things. So for her, she's definitely been a powerful influence in families and building families and setting appropriate boundaries and relationships. So if you like this video, please leave a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more like this, where I do product and service reviews, as well as growth strategies to help you grow a business from idea to full-time income and from full-time income to enterprise, then definitely subscribe to this channel and click the bell icon so you can be notified of upcoming videos. That's all I have for this video. If you'd like to see more videos where I talk about successful entrepreneurs and how they got there, then definitely stop by the How to Entrepreneur YouTube channel and check those videos out. That's all I have for this one and I really hope to see you in the next one. Have a great day. Bye.